Hello everyone, my name is Zach, and this is a video that I knew I was going to have to make someday, but didn't think it would be today, and in fact, it wasn't today, it was yesterday. Um, the video that I am in regards to was uploaded on March 3rd, 2023, so yesterday, it's the 4th right now, and it is a video that we're going to get into here about where is Dope or Nope. So Dope or Nope is a channel that was once called Matthias, and that's the guy there, obviously, if you haven't watched him already. And he, um, this, it used to be like a channel where he'd make music videos and stuff like that, and then it became an unboxing channel, and then it was renamed in 2018 to Dope or Nope, and it's been that since then, but they still did unboxing. It was just on a couch and with more than just him. On screen, it was Michael and Tanner on screen, and then later it was Woods and Tanner on screen, and then it eventually became him again at the desk setup, and now we are where we're at. So, basically, this is a channel I've been watching since I was a kid. In fact, this is the channel that inspired me to do the unboxing videos, the Buy or Don't Buy series on this channel. Yeah, and he also inspired me to do vlogs, which was on his Matthias Vlogs channel, which is now Overkill, which is a channel that we'll get into it. You just need to, don't know all the lore. But basically, he had a studio in 2017 or 2016 that he started called High Five Studios. He made a bunch of channels, um, all sorts of channels. And yeah, you also might know his brothers and his brother in law and his brother Joey and his brother in law Brian on Team Edge, which they all started in a garage together around the time the High Five Studios started, in fact. And that is where I got it from. Originally, I found them from Markiplier. Then I saw a Markiplier collab with Team Edge. And then eventually, I found Matthias on a Sky Mall video with Sam, which coincidentally enough, that was her first video. But, anyways, yeah. Basically, you saw the title here. I'm going to react to this video right now. It came up yesterday. Obviously, I already watched it because it's already liked here. But we are going to watch this, and I'm going to share my reactions, share my thoughts with you guys. So let's get into a little intro here. What's going on, guys? About a month ago, I made the decision to take a break from making videos on this channel. The last time I took a break from making Dope or Nope videos was <laughs> probably a couple of years ago. And before that, I think eight years ago or so. Yeah, a long time. With Tanner and Woods moving on and no longer a part of Dope or Nope, I was in such a rush to try and make this work for all of you. Okay, I'm sorry to already interrupt, but obviously Tanner and Woods were the last crew on Dope or Nope. Woods, or Tanner lived in Las Vegas for the past couple years and got married to his wife, Haley. He finally moved on to Las Vegas and still having to drive and stay at Matt's house, f drive like eight hours from Las Vegas to, to Santa Clarita or Valencia or wherever, somewhere along those lines. You, you know what I mean? Basically, the Los Angeles kind of area. And Woods, in fact, is moving to Arizona with his girlfriend, uh, Natalie, I believe. And so they're moving on with their lives. They've been at the studio since about the start of the studio, around 2017-ish. And they've seen the studio grow, and they've been here all along. But here we go. Let's go. Sorry, excuse me. Back to the video. And for everyone here that I never stopped to think, is it even going to work? Can it even work? And I think probably most importantly, do I even feel called to do this kind of content anymore? And so I asked myself, the answer that immediately came to me was no, <laughs> which admittedly scared me. I've been making videos on this channel for a long time, like legit a decade. So I decided to take a break for a few weeks. I went on vacation even to reflect on whether or not that was true, that I didn't want to, or maybe I was just simply burned. Now that is true. If we go to his channel here, how the heck am I going to do this? If I go to his channel, you can see the last video was a month ago. Um, obviously, they were pretty consistent up until a month ago. They even had a live stream, but okay, let's go back to the video. Turned out. So I decided to take just a beat, stop uploading, just take a beat and reflect. A ton of things were just bouncing around in my head. I've had some really great and fun times with all of you and with all of my friends on this channel. I've transitioned content on this channel a lot. I mean, this was my first channel on YouTube ever. I've created a crazy amount of videos on this channel, literally over a thousand videos just on this channel with over 2.4 billion views. That's absolutely wild. I've been making goofy product videos since 2016, which is around seven years now. 
I've what's crazy is I've been watching him since 2016. I've literally been watching since the unboxing videos. I came just after like the original iteration of when he moved into the office. Like he has like the studio building now. Um, I I came just after he moved out of his house doing videos there and instead doing videos at the studio to be honest i oh. really love this channel and i am eternally grateful for that i appreciate that you ever gave me a chance to do this this is my dream job i have so many more stories to tell i'm not sure this channel fits any of them anymore with all that in mind, it was a seriously difficult decision for me to make. What do you do when you feel like you've told the story that you set out to tell, but everyone around you keeps telling you to keep telling that story? I'm not saying I'm never gonna upload on this channel again. I really don't know. What I am saying is I'm taking a break from uploading on this channel for now with a return date of TBD. So I know exactly what he's talking about. So this channel, so he's gonna explain it, I should probably just shut up, but he explains it later in the video where he talks about the culture shift. He was trying to find out what was wrong with the culture, what was making him not feel fulfilled in what he's doing here. And ultimately he ended up having to let go over the course of years, about 95% of the crew. They had a crew of like 40 at one point because he found out that he wanted to do something more story driven, not, that's what the Project 863 thing came from and not so much do anything like this. And I'm really taking a very big limb out here making a video on my personal channel about this because my personal channel is a pretty broad channel. I pretty much go over like trending things. You know how it is, like the podcast that I do. Overall vibing, link in the description, What, where I talk about current events and stuff like that. Um, yeah, so this is kind of going out on a limb here to talk about something that I am passionate about. This is something I wanted to talk about just because it's been such a big part of my life. It's a lot of the reason I'm here with you guys right now. The original inspiration for the channel was Markiplier when I was a gameplay channel, but then I don't like video games, so then I transitioned to doing vlogs because of Matthias vlogs. This guy, literally this guy right here, and then... I decided to do unboxing videos just like this guy right here on Matthias channel, which later became Dope Nope, which is this, which unboxing videos, because people on this channel seem to love the unboxing videos too, so I do a mix of vlogs and unboxing videos. Have been doing vlogs a lot anymore because don't have a lot of time for editing that, so I, that's why I'm doing these sit down things that I call Zach's chats. Anyway, we're ranting a little much. Let's just, let's just continue on here. Oh, yeah. To be honest, I really don't know. I really don't know if I ever want to make videos again at this desk, and most definitely not until I have something interesting and valuable f to give you. I just don't really see any of that on the horizon. And with everything I've told you, it just makes the most sense to take a break. Who knows, over the next coming year, I might get some inspiration, might heal a bit, and get excited about it again, but that's just not where I am right now, and that's not even what I can see right now. So, am I quitting YouTube? No. I have a ton of stories and ideas, and things that I want to create. It's just not in the niche of silly products anymore. Admittedly, as much fun as that had really been over the past seven years. So why don't you just start making videos you want to make? I'm going to. It's just not on this channel. This channel has been so niched that it's really impossible to transition it from the type of product videos that we've done for that years. That is true because Any the video videos that have I definitely been going down this channel, this channel would be destined to fail and in the algorithm. And you probably can't hear me because he's talking right now, but yeah, the, vid the views have been going down significantly on this channel. They used to hit 1 million within 24 hours at their heyday. Their heyday was around 2018, 2019, where they were putting out three videos a week, consistent upload times, and they were putting out, they were all exactly 24 minutes. I think that was for analytical reasons. And they were high production value. You know, nowadays, the or the Dope Nope videos that we get are pretty much once a week. Just randomly, it seems like. And so I think that doesn't help the algorithm. This is still their top earning channel. They only have like two channels now. Um, this and Overkill, which Overkill was Matthias Vlogs. And his overkill stuff doesn't really get that many views, if I'm going to be honest, totally honest. But when it was Project 863, it used to get tons of views. Let's go to his channel over here, Overkill. Um, yeah. So he live streams. It's kind of nice to interact with him, you know. But, of course, this isn't content for everyone. You can see right here... 
that this is this is project 863 it was this it was this story driven his first story driven series kind of it lasted two years and it went through this whole storyline it's so hard to explain i watched all of it even if it doesn't say i've watched it i've watched all of this and i followed it around it was kind of interesting in the beginning but then it gets started getting science fictiony and that's not something i'm really into i'm not really into science fiction fantasy type of stuff sometimes i like to sp suspend my disbelief for a little bit like when me and ali last week we watched a mandalorian i watched mandalorian for the first time with her we watched one episode i thought it was super interesting not too star warsy not too serious but just just i don't even need to know the lore i can just jump into it i like that it's just the right enough of si science fiction for me so i think we're going to continue with that but but yeah, it just got super boring. I watched all of them though because I just needed content to watch, but then it eventually became like this fantasy thing. And now it's this character that he plays that's all about like playing video games and stuff. And it's kind of interesting, but you know, I don't know. Hopefully we get some more channels coming out, but yeah. It was specifically in this niche and that's just kind of the way things are. So I'll be making videos and telling stories on the Overkill channel. And if you'd like to follow me on that journey, come join me. Just We're like gonna have I a lot just of fun. You just this now. isn't goodbye just because I'm not making content on this channel anymore. I'm literally just one channel over. Come say hi. If you're curious, I'll talk more about what I'm gonna be doing on that channel at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that if there's any little bit of you that's curious. Okay, so why is this video so long then? <laughs> What's the rest of the video? Something else I wanted to talk to you about was all the rumors circulating around the comments and in the community. I know there's just the community has gotten pretty toxic lately talking about reasons why they think all the ex crew members got hired. There was a lot of on, on camera talent and he's going to talk about it. We could pretty much. Yeah, he's going to talk about it, but it's pretty much just talking about like the culture and what is wrong, what was wrong with it and how those people that we found, I found entertaining on camera, like a lot of them I love, like Michael, Hannah. Hmm. Yeah, like Michael, Hannah, all those type of people that I really liked uh, are gone for specific reasons or another. A lot of them. And a lot of them aren't even friends anymore because, like, I was talking to Rose on her live stream recently, and she doesn't even talk to, like, Pat or Hannah or any of them because they all grew up hard, but they all move their separate ways and separate lives, you know? And that's what happens eventually with everyone, you know? You can't stay friends with people forever, and you have to change. People change, you change. So, obviously, nothing's going to last forever, but I knew there was an end coming eventually, but sometimes you like to suspend the disbelief and think it's going to last forever, you know? But it's not going to. But we had a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun on this channel, um, watching him um, grow, grow as people and watching the channel change. So, let's just keep going. A lot of misinformation on what's going on behind the scenes, but even more than just Dope or Nope, about Spellbound in its entirety. There are a lot of rumors that people are starting. I know what it looks like. It looks like everyone's leaving Spellbound and things are it falling It does. From apart. the outside, it looks like that. with all these channels That's shutting down. That genu genuinely what it, it looks like. It looks like with all these channels shutting down that they're literally just falling apart, just like he says here, but apparently they're not. I mean, we only see a little tidbit when we watch videos back. When we watch his videos, we only see a... Excuse me. We only watch a little tidbit of what's going on, so, you know. I can see what you see, but I haven't really been transparent with what has been happening behind the scenes for these past four years. I've been in the process of making it happen. So let me explain. About four-ish years ago or so, I realized I had just a terrible problem on my hands. <laughs> All the channels and shows that I'd started were beginning to fall apart. I would jump from sinking ship to sinking ship trying to fix everything. Battle Universe would start declining. I would just jump in there, fix the creative. I remember those days, and I remember specifically, first off, I was at a really good point in my life during high school at that time, so then I stopped watching YouTube a lot of the time. Also, we didn't have internet at in my house yet, so I wasn't really watching YouTube. I was watching like one YouTube video a day. Nothing compared to nowadays, but what ended up happening is he had a bunch of channels, right? They all had separate themes, but then eventually they all became challenge-based videos, like, oh, 
nasty shot spinner on fail time. Oh, nerf dart challenge on battle universe. Oh, it all felt really challenge based. That's where YouTube was at the time to like grow and become like blow up. You do know, just like doing challenge videos and stuff like that. But that wasn't, I didn't want every channel that I was watching at this network at the time, which is, this is like pretty much the only network I was watching on YouTube, high five studios, all of this guy's channels literally it all became the same thing and that is not what i like to watch it is all the same thing i liked the little themes like wrecked became a bunch of challenges too it just became too much for me i didn't like all challenges i like challenges in moderation you know like team edge is all challenges but that was like my challenge thing and then at fail time i want to see photoshop fails i don't want to see this but of course he explained a long time ago that it was about copyright and i understand but how are you going to create a react channel without reacting to copyright content i mean you just have to everything's copyright nowadays um but you have to do enough things to make it fair use but anyways i'm just ranting on i'm just it's this is like a late night 10 o'clock p.m rant on a saturday night what do you expect from me huh to fix the technical fix the team problems fix the culture problems and get back on track then before i knew it wrecked dope or no fail time we're all in decline while i was fixing bu people were failing to shoot failing to write failing to upload failing to get along, you name it. All the while, me never even getting the opportunity to be creative, the opportunity to start connecting with my community. For years, I just put out fires. And then one day it was just too much. I realized I didn't want this to be my life. Coming home stressed out of my mind, burning out every weekend, never getting to do what I was good at, what I wanted to do, which was just telling stories and being creative and engaging and having fun with my audience. To be clear, I made this mess. Sorry for all the I'm fully aware of that, <laughs> which means I needed to clean it up because what I wanted was not this. What I wanted was just a culture of creatives all creating awesome things. And from the it seemed like that's what he was trying to do. But what it ended up being was anyone who wanted to like work for a YouTuber and get big on YouTube uh, was to come to High Five Studios, get hired, and then become like a vlogger, or, like do some challenge things. Because that's what uh, people when they want to become YouTubers, they want to do challenges, they want to do all sorts of stuff like that. Typically, and that's what it became. That's probably not what he wanted originally. You know, he is a pretty creative type. He originally has a film degree, maybe a master's degree in film. Um. Which is pretty creative for a YouTuber, you know? That's what he originally went to school for. Then he found out that he didn't want to direct and do things a traditional way. Then he came to YouTube to do his own sketches and stuff like that. The outside, it might have looked like that. But on the inside, it just wasn't that. So I hired two different, extremely talented executive coaches that mentored me over the past couple of years. Read hundreds of books. Yes, you heard that right. Hundreds of books. Invested tens of thousands of dollars in training my employees. Bought hundreds of books for any employee willing to read it and improve their skill. I think I even paid for multiple employees schooling and their own personal education wherever they wanted to learn. I would pay for it <laughs> like no joke. But at the end of the day, I had simply hired incorrectly. I had a culture problem, a skill problem, not a creative problem, not a systems problem. I had a culture problem. So I had a massive choice ahead of me. Either I shut everything down, terminate everyone and start over with all of the insight and wisdom that I had learned on how to <laughs> probably run a business correctly, or I would slow down and slowly and methodically dismantle everything until we were left with just the skilled people who wanted to make cool stuff. Real question is, which one would you choose? Because I don't think there's a right answer. See, now I'm going to into school for, I'm about to have a bachelor's in business management. And it is interesting to see him dealing with real world issues. Like you have a culture problem at work. You can't just obviously just clean house. Well, you can, but that won't do good for morale and stuff like that. And it just... I don't know. It just seems like a hard decision to like you're feeding people. Basically, you're paying their rent. You're feeding people. You're paying for their pets, food and stuff like that. It's just hard to feel like you're let when you let go of 40 people like this is obviously p big corporations let go of like 10,000 people. But that was their whole staff. And that seems like a lot for me, even just thinking about having a business. I don't even have a business yet, but it just seems like, you know, it is too much. There is the, there is the, oh, just because you're a bad performer in a business does not mean you're a bad person, all right? Inherently, it doesn't mean you're a bad person, but I think this is very interesting. It's a very interesting thought that he's bringing up here of how, how, what it, if it was my decision to make, it'd be hard. 
it wouldn't be any easier. We're giving, we're, the fans tend to make it seem like it's super easy to just, oh, let's just open a studio and run it and just, we're going to make a lot of money. There has to be, there has to be limited management. Just let them do. Though, these videos are highly planned, people. They might not be scripted, like fail time and stuff like that. But they're definitely planning. You you need plans to have these consistent uploads. So you have like have to have a recording schedule. You have to get those products aligned. Like example for Dope or Nope, it took so many logistics to get ten products. They do they open thirty products a week in their heyday. Three three uploads a week. That is. First off, you have to pay an editor. They have to edit this whole crazy footage, all the hours worth of footage, down to 24 minutes. Then they have to buy 10 products that are about that they hopefully have not seen yet, and then they have to unbox them on camera. And yeah, they have to do 30 of those a week, which means they have to record in advance, of course, because editing takes time. It's just a whole thing, and that's just for dope or nope. That's not even for the other like eight channels or something that they had. Crazy amounts of work going on. I applaud them. It is a lot of work to do all that. Um, let's get back to the video. To be honest, I really oh don't my God. know. I really, oh, fail time. We're all in decline. While well, I was fixing B awesome things, and from the outside, it might have looked. Sorry, my my um, when I press hotkeys, they're on a numpad, and it skips around the video if I don't click out of the window. Like that, but on the inside, it just wasn't that. So I hired two different, extremely talented executive coaches that mentored me over the past couple of years. Read hundreds of books. Yes, you heard that right. Hundreds of books. Invested tens of thousands of dollars in training my employees. Really watch this. Or I would slow down and slowly and methodically dismantle everything until, despite their charisma and relatability on camera, either weren't skilled or a great fit for the team. But why hide it? Why hide terminating all these people? I'm really not hiding it. I'm just choosing not to be transparent about it. That's why I take it on the chin and let people make up all these silly rumors about everything going on behind the scenes in Spellbound, because I'd rather take the hit to my reputation than announce to a million people that Blake was terminated because of poor performance. He may have been great on camera, but the other 90% of the time, he could not produce results to save his life and wasn't a great fit for the team. The reality is that Blake might be a fantastic fit for a different team in a different company. And announcing that he's a poor performer to you all, hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, might jeopardize his career for a decade because once a video is uploaded on the internet, it stays on the internet. I'm See, I I think that is definitely fair because because of the nature of where he is and how there's millions of people viewing these videos, I don't think it would be good to say that someone's a bad performer because once they leave the company, obviously a lot of people are going to know about it and then maybe someone will like maybe will show up on one day and their boss and then some boss asks like asks uh, people to like read through someone to read through their the resumes that got submitted and they're like oh yeah i recognize his name he used to work at this place he was a bad performer according to his boss and obviously they don't want that they i don't even think it's anyone's business why he let them go anyway but of course these fans it's kind of a lower age fan base it's like like preteen to teens it's kind of a younger but this is this is like a appropriate videos you know you know what I mean. This is like a, a YouTube studio that's like fit for all ages, it's like family friendly content, you know? Well, my, you know what I mean. The main audience is probably not that old. Um, Well, the audience is growing up now, but you know what I mean. I just keep saying, you know what I mean. But yeah, obviously I don't know why people need to know like why so-and-so was let go. It doesn't matter really. It just matters that they're not there anymore. And you got to get used to it. Well, there's nothing you could do. If, even if you know the answer, even if you know why they like, got let go, then what's the difference? Just know that they're probably doing okay. I'm just not okay with that fallout because it protects my reputation. I want to win for everyone. I just haven't ever found a solution where the former employee wins, you, the audience, wins, and I win. I would honestly love to know what you would do in that situation. Would you protect yourself and reveal everything, or would you protect a former employee to ensure a better future for them at the cost of your own reputation? Or, better yet, can you see a win-win that I cannot? Honestly, I would really love to know, because over the past four years, this has been one of the questions that keeps me up at night. I want to do the right thing, and the best thing that I can do is what I believe is right in the moment based on the values and the principles that I set out for myself in my own life. As of January 2023, it's over. 
the process I set out to do nearly four years ago, cleaning my business is finished. That's why it feels like there's almost no one left from the original business. And that's why I feel like I can finally talk about it. No. Yeah, so I noticed the downsizing over the course of the years, obviously. And I don't remember, I think it was in 2020, a bunch of people got let go. Like Rose got let go. Um, yeah, Rose got let go. And then eventually Hannah, CJ, Pat, a lot of people. That's pretty much the Battle Universe team. But you know what I mean. A lot of people. I think a bunch of people left too, like... Like, I know for a fact someone that did leave. Not going to name drop, obviously. But, yeah. I could definitely see that. I definitely saw it happening in real time. I knew it was happening. And I knew it was happening for a reason. I mean, he's going to do what he's going to do. Matthias is going to do what he's going to do, obviously. And he's going to do what's best for the company. But at the end of the day, it is a company. If there's people that are underperforming, you can't just keep paying, like, full salaries, especially in California. California salaries, he's probably paying them a decent living wage, I would assume. Otherwise, they wouldn't work there for four years. But, but obviously, you know, it, it's just... It's just a change of eras, and I think it's culture shocking a lot of people, and I think a lot of people were here for that, just like he says. Excuse me. They were here for the high five era, and they're not here for this. I'm not quite all the way here for this. I was here for the high five era, obviously, but I'm still here. I was still watching Gopher Nope. It was like the last little piece of the high five era that we were all holding on to. They were holding on to. It was probably the most profitable channel still because it, it's the one of the most subs. It has 7 million subscribers. Seven, seven, I almost said 7,000. It says 7.45 7 million subscribers there. Dang it, it went back again. I don't remember what the timestamp was that we were at. Hold on. We were like at 824 or something. And then I cannot. Honestly, I would really love to know. I believe it's right in the moment based on the values and the principles that I set out for myself in my own life. As of January, 2023, it's over. The process I set out to do nearly four years ago, cleaning my business is finished. That's why it feels like there's almost no one left from the original business. There and really that's why no I feel like I can finally talk business. about it. No, Spellbound is not falling apart. It's becoming lean and mean all by design. Everyone here currently at the studio is a great fit and does really great work. And I'm really excited about some of the things we have in store for you. That being said, I really wanna heal our relationship. I realize some of you were just here for the fun. Some of you were just here to see the comedic back and forth between me and my friends. Some of you were just here for Tanner and some of you were just here for Woods or other members of the staff that are no longer here. And that's totally okay. If you wanna move on because that's not a part of this anymore, please do so. I'm not trying to keep you if, if this isn't what you want anymore. I really wanna make sure that whatever you're watching is valuable to you. And if what I wanna create isn't valuable to you, watch another creator. And like genuinely, I'm not saying that with any bitterness. Please don't waste your time watching my content if it does nothing for you. I really wanna start from square one if you give me a chance. I wanna go back to being a YouTuber. <laughs> it sounds silly, but I don't wanna be a businessman. I never wanted to be a businessman, genuinely. I was just trying to do the business stuff simply because I thought I needed to do it because I had built something that I didn't realize I needed to be a businessman for. I know, it sounds really dumb. It was my 20s, what, what can you expect from me in my first business? <laughs> I wanna be an artist again, like I used to. I wanna tell stories, I wanna make music videos, I wanna hang out with you guys, I wanna live stream and host events. I wanna start building again with you. Sure, I'll get less views and make probably a lot less money, but that's never really what it was about in the first place. Before I tell you what I'm gonna be doing, why don't we jump on over to Overkill for a second. So here is what I'm going to be doing on Overkill. And I want to be deeply consistent to earn your trust back. Number one. Okay, so before we get into that, this is what the new setup is. Obviously, it's the Overkill character that came up in about 2021, I like to say, where originally Doper Nope, he was going to switch Doper Nope to Overkill. It was going to be this character where they just buy awesome things so they don't have to throw all this Chinese crap away. <laughs> But then it became, then it got a huge audience backlash, then it went back to Dope or Nope. Um, this is around the time almost all the channels were canceled, and it was just Project A63 going on, um, which lasted until June 2022, or something along those lines. And yeah, so this is, this is what it is, it's just going to be him streaming a lot of the time, going over fan submissions, which is cool. I like how he's taking a more fan approach, because... 
it seemed very impersonal when there was like 10,000 channels and then none of them were really mentioning the fans or the comments section or showing the comments section necessarily. So this is kind of cool. I like the the creator fan interaction type of thing. So people get a little bit of getting to talk to Matthias and some of the staff members and stuff. That's also what the Discord does that I don't use. <laughs> the Spellbound Discord, all that jazz because I just don't like Discord. So yeah. <laughs> One, one video a week minimum on Friday, no matter what. That is Friday, 2 p.m. PST. I will upload no matter what. Lord. Okay, so that is another thing. What really, really gets you out into the algorithm, he knows this, is uploading consistency. Uploading consistently. Because Dope or Nope used to upload Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then Team, or I don't know, Team Edge might have an upload schedule still, but it used to be like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. PST, boom, video every single one of those days, never, never not. So that also draws fan ins. They know when to tune in. They know what's happening. They know there's always going to be a video to be able to depend on. It makes you want to click on that video better. Like I even used to have an upload schedule back then. I used to be like Mondays and Fridays. At like 2 p.m. or something, I was like scheduling vlogs. I was editing vlogs at nighttime, like midnight, just to be able to make these upload schedules and stuff like that back in 2018. It was wild originally when I started. In fact, it's almost been five years, but oh, it has been five years. But anyways, it's not about me. It's about reacting to this video. Let's just finish this up here so we can uh, say my final thoughts and get out of here. Lord willing, I will not miss. And if I do i will double upload the next week and not only that i will communicate as soon as possible as soon as i learn when i'm gonna miss which hopefully is never that also means if i upload monday you'll still get a video friday if i upload monday tuesday wednesday you'll still get a video friday 2 p.m pst sharp number two i want to make videos that i genuinely want to make some of that might be artistic story pieces, some of it might be music videos some of it might be hanging out and viewing all of your amazing creations on reddit it can vary. It's going to vary. Number three, I will be transparent with you about where I'm going and what I'm going through and what I have gone through too, so long as it doesn't throw anyone under the bus. And I'll make sure to it that the business doesn't ever get in the way of our relationship. That means me and you. At the end of the day, I really desire to tell stories that lift people up. And that's really what I'm gonna do. And look, I know Overkill isn't for everyone, and honestly, maybe it I'm going a little too hard to paint with the character. I get that, and the voice, I get that. I'll ease up, okay? I just want you to know I'm gonna be taking a different approach. And if you decide to not give me another chance, I totally respect that. I want to say thank you for giving me the first chance. This has been a wild ride. Despite all the chaos, we really have all had some really great fun and made some really great memories together. So I just want to thank you for being a part of it. Everyone here at Spellbound appreciates you, and I hope to see you soon. And I'm truly grateful for the story that we told together on Dope or Nope. So if you're willing to give me a shot, link down in the description. Jump on over to Overkill and subscribe. And next Friday, 2 p.m. PST, I'll see you then. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. But it is interesting. It has been an interesting ride to see Woods and all these other people that started off almost like just like 22 year olds and then in 2017 and watch. I grew up with them. I grew up with them. They have been a part of my life. The whole High Five Studios has been a part of my life, obviously. So is Matt. Because I grew up with them. This is what I've been watching. This is what I've watched instead of watching TV in the last few years and up in around 2017 when I started getting really into YouTube. And they even inspired me to make YouTube videos. This is almost the whole reason why I'm here. This is practically the whole reason why I'm here because I saw him making vlogs and I was like, hey, I want to do that. Saw him unboxing and I was like, hey, I want to do that too. And that's why we're still here today, you know? And of course, this will have a bitter end too. Well, not bitter, but everything has to come to an end. By the time I have like a family and kids, we'll see what's going on. We'll see if this channel has even grown by then. But yeah, it's been interesting to see Hannah and CJ, Pat, Woods, Tanner, uh, everyone just move on mitch that's a very big throwback all sorts of people just move on with their lives see them move on to separate places a lot of them lived in california rose is going to be or just moved out of california 
she's been there her whole life or grew up there or something. A bunch of people just moving on with their lives. And it's nice to see that Matt is also moving on too. He is finally taking grasp and moving away from the Dope or Nope days. I will miss it because it was the last part of where my heart was, which was High Five. I originally stopped watching a lot of High Five content by 2021 and by the time it became spellbound i was pretty much out i wasn't into what they were doing with project a63 even though it was tantalizing or i don't even think that's the right word to see what's going on with syphus and all that and i did watch the whole story to the end just because my curiosity got me you know so it did turn out interesting i did appreciate the production value it wasn't quite for me but i still watched it but it was enjoyable at times you know and so yeah it is interesting to see them watch them grow up with me they're growing onto their own lives they're growing their own families now like tanner and woods they're all they're all doing their own thing so it's very interesting to see and see them progress through life you know because at the end of the day the common office is gone and it was a good memory and here we are and so I'm interested to see what type of era Matt is building now in the new studio with like Bailey and Sam are still there, obviously, and some new people, obviously, I think Lauren or something. And it will be interesting. It will be interesting. I will be checking in on it and seeing what's up. I've been mostly watching the H3 podcast and Linus Tech Tips for the most part nowadays. But I still come back to Dope or Nope and watch a Team Edge and, and occasionally. I'm not really into Team Edge nowadays either, but we'll see what happens. So there's my reaction. It is definitely the end of the High Five Studios area officially because it marked the end of all the ex-employees. It marked the end of this one channel that lasted all the way through the whole transition and then some. And so yeah, here we are. Here we are here and I'm going to I'm going to see what what happens next. So, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Ooh, and I wanted to go over I I did make a comment yesterday. I put To be honest, I really don't oh know. Oh boy. Okay, wait. I did put a comment you could barely see it. I'm going to zoom in. Let's see here. My comment said, it feels like this is marking the last part of Hi-Fi Studios era, and we are now stepping into the spellbound era of videos and channels. Doper and Ope is pretty much the last slice of Hi-Fi that was still active until today, yesterday. Um, it has been great to watch you go through your initial run on Doper Nope and other channels and look forward to, to what you have in store. You deserve a chance from me, a fan from the high five days, to see what you're truly capable of and now that you will feel fulfilled in what you are making. I will be here. So I think that pretty much sums it up for me here. That's pretty much all I have to say. This video is going on for so long. Those reaction videos take forever, Bills. I have to say 10,000 things and pause it so much. But thank you all so much for watching. We will see what High Five is. Well, not High Five anymore. We will see what Matthias and Spellbound has in the future here. We'll just keep, keep our eyes peeled for a new era coming in and see if it interests us. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We still have all the old videos to reminisce on and obviously find new creators obviously that um, tickle your fancy per se and mine too i already did uh, back in 2020 but here we are again and even though i i kind of moved on and it came back but thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all later peace